Hey everybody, welcome to Star Labs Confidential. For today's guest, I have Dalton Barrett, or as many viewers might know him, as Barrett.Digital on Instagram. And as for today's topics, we're going over a lot of the Superman contests I've been out recently, as well as the recent episodes of WandaVision. So to start us off, Dalton, what are your thoughts on the Superman reboot idea? I like it. I, um... You know, I I got a lot of I get a lot of comments as you would uh, suspect uh, with varying opinions and ideas and and whatever and um, I'm always kind of surprised whenever you do something with Superman because um, I love Henry Cavill and I love him to death as an actor and he seems like a super great guy and I even like him as as Clark Kent I think visually he got he's got the part and he's got the acting chops but um, people seem to have put this this huge emphasis on Henry Cavill as like he's the only person for the rest of time that can play Superman, which I, I don't see as true. I think there are plenty of talented actors who can pull it off. And um, I'm super excited to see what comes of it. You know, I'm OK with with a Valzad or, or, or Calvin Ellis uh, Superman story. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of J.J. Abrams as a filmmaker, but I think he could do a stellar job um, if given the right story. And yeah, I'm excited to see what kind of comes of it. I, I'm a big Superman fan. Superman is my favorite fictional character of all time, not just comic books or whatever. He's just my favorite fictional character. And so I'm super excited to see what comes of it just because I'm always excited for more Superman stories. Agreed. Because I feel like like Joker, this could be just a standalone film doesn't to be essentially part of the shared universe because Honestly, this doesn't feel like much of a shared universe, so to speak, just with um, knowing some similar actors. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the uh, the idea of the DCEU is pretty much gone at this point, you know, um, whether you like whether you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it. It seems like the connectedness of the universe is sort of sort of crumbled. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. There, there doesn't seem to be much, much uh, in the way of connections at this point. You know, you got Marvel and they do their solo movies, but everything still feels interconnected. And the DC EU really struggled with that the whole time. Uh, Shazam doesn't necessarily feel like it's connected outside of the Superman cameo, and Aquaman's got the same issue, and even Wonder Woman, uh, and and later especially Wonder Woman eighty four. None of them feel um, connected to each other, and uh, which is fine. I, I I would prefer DC tries that out and and sees what is you know just play with that and see what comes of it instead of trying to cram. A cinematic universe together anyway um but yeah i'm i'm totally fine with an elseworld superman story we've we've got tons of good superman stories in in film form over the years so i'm excited to see them try something new we've seen clark kent more times than probably any other character has been remade so yeah let's oh, yeah. Try something new yeah we look at just like tv or movies there's a whole pantheon of actors <laughs> Yes, you got George Reeves. There was somebody else who played him in serials that I can't remember. Uh, Christopher Reeve, Dean Cain, Tom Welling, Brandon Routh, uh, Tyler Hecklin, and Henry Cavill. That's eight right there already. And I'm probably missing some, you know, in terms of animation, all that other stuff. So, yeah, it's time to put, you know, I like Clark Kent, but let's let's try something new, you know? Yeah, I just imagine for the fans, they probably just want, like, to give Henry Cavill a good Superman film, like, where he's more more happy, more energetic, I guess, more hopeful than compared yeah, to I, what we saw before. I would absolutely love that because I'm a huge Superman fan. Of course, I would like to see that. But at the same time, if, you know, we, we don't really know what the holdup is. I Once again, if Henry Cavill's on board and the studio's on board, let's do it. But um, I'm also not going to be all that upset if he if he doesn't come back, whether by his own choice or, or whatever, because we do have so many great Superman stories. And and um, while he does look the part and I love him as an actor, he's got he's got a great future ahead of him. It's not like he needs Superman to succeed at this point. He's got, you know, the Witcher and and he was in Mission Impossible and he's lining up gigs left and right. Nobody's not going to hire Henry Cavill when he comes to audition. So I think he's I think he'll be OK um, from here on out without it, because you do have to remember these are just people. Um, he's not he's not actually Superman. He's uh <laughs> He's an actor, and so he can land some other gigs if he wants to. And this is not me saying I don't want Man of Steel 2, because trust me, I do. But, you know, if we are getting this Elseworld story, I'm down for that, too. Definitely, because depending on how the Snyder Cut handles things, this could be a it could lead up to a very interesting Superman movie where how does he deal with being resurrected and everything? Plus, is Clark back to life, too, or is he just going to be full-time Superman? Yeah, no, I could definitely... 
see some interesting stuff coming out of the backside of that. Um, but it, I, once again, I don't, uh, I don't know what the future of all that holds. Um, don't know what this, the, the, you know, I have no idea. I, I, I don't think anybody has any idea. I don't even think the executive, <laughs> the execs over at Warner brothers know what's going on with it, but me neither. Um, like I said, I'm excited for to see what new Superman content we get. And if it is a Henry Cavill story, great. If it's a Brandon Routh Kingdom Come story, great. If it's more Tyler Hecklin stuff, great. Like I'm just excited to uh excited to see Superman. Definitely. That's why I felt like when I watched the show, because it was a nice breath of fresh air, sort of like a middle ground between like how Snyder would go by and how like um more traditional Superman story is with him being a father, bringing the family back to Smallville. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we haven't talked about this. We haven't talked much about varying opinions on things. I don't know how you feel about the the Snyder Superman stuff. And um, I like Man of Steel. Um, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of BVS. I I, I understand it. You know, has kind of got that following, and I respect people who like it. I don't have any issues with people who enjoy it. It's just not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Man of Steel, but it never felt like a Superman movie to me. Um, it was a good movie, but it it didn't it never necessarily caught me as a Superman movie, which is fine. Like if you're telling good stories, you don't have to be comic accurate. You don't have to do any of that stuff. I don't care um, if you're telling good stories. And I think Man of Steel is a good story. Um, but what I liked so much about Superman and Lois was uh, it it made me feel like a kid again, and it was genuinely uh, a neat feeling of. I think I told someone when it came out, it was like it was like seeing a friend you haven't seen in years. Like you finally get to meet up with your buddy who you haven't seen, you know, since high school. Like it, it had that feeling to me. And I, I really, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it did the thing that man of steel, once again, I like man of steel, but it did what man of steel tried and failed to do, which is modernize Superman in a way that still feels like Superman, which I don't think was ever man of steel's intention, but you can kind of, fill in the gaps with that analogy Agreed. but it, it 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 didn't just modernize superman it it was just superman which i think is is was awesome and like i said it made me feel like a kid again for the first time in forever because i've loved this character my entire life i like to say when i was growing up i had three heroes my dad my granddad and superman so it it um it was really special for me and i've only seen the pilot at this point so who knows where it goes from here it could the episode two could be horrible we'll we'll just have to wait and see i guess yeah, at least they're not having too many episodes, just uh, 15 for right now. Yes. Yeah, hopefully so. I know there's a miss, or I was talking to uh, Eunice, World of Flash. I talk to him every now and then. Um, but he uh, he was telling me, you know, I thought and everybody thought that it was a joint deal with HBO Max. And that was the difference in quality. But it turns out it's not at all. Like, it's just, that's all CW. So who knows where it's going to go from here? I don't trust them as much as I trust HBO Max, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, I imagine after with um, Arrow and some of the other DC shows ending, there probably is more of a budget to really, really kind of amp it up in terms of in terms of quality as well as to uh, compete with the other streaming services and other channels. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think it, uh, like I said, it seems like they poured a lot more money into this. And um, I know at the end, at the wrap up, it is going straight to HBO Max, whereas the other DC shows or, or CW shows went straight to Netflix. So there are some little things like that. Um, and they're keeping the full season on the CW app as opposed to five episodes like it has been in the past. Um, so who knows? Who knows? But I'm just hoping the quality keeps up because so far I'm really... I'm really enjoying it. I've seen that pilot episode like three three times now because it was it was <laughs> so much fun. Same because I agree with you. I, it definitely felt like being a kid again, seeing the um, the Easter eggs, especially with the first comic ish, issue Easter egg for one, like seeing the the Fleischer costume and and everything in terms of showcasing major moments in Superman's life with with his time in Smallville, proposing to Lois, and everything. Yeah. The, the, the wrap up was really neat. And um, the thing I think it did really well was it just kind of captured that character. Uh, I was talking to uh, a guy I work with who's been a lifelong Superman fan. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's an older guy. He's in his 60s. And he grew up watching the George Reeves 50s serials. And that's always been his Superman his whole life. So he's seen everything that's come out since then to now. And he, uh, when I was talking to him, I guess earlier today, he said, you know, 
this, if it keeps up pace the way it is right now, has the chance to be the best Superman of all time. And I tend to agree with him, as weird as that is for me to say, because it is a CW show. If this keeps up the pace it's going now, Tyler Hecklin has the chance to be the greatest Superman of all time. And it's really weird to be able to say that, but I'm super excited that I can. Yeah, I know, because like most people, they always think of first off uh, either Chris Reeves, if not Henry Cavill, because you know Henry Cavill may have the right um, look and some acting talent, but Chris Reeves kind of set like the gold standard. Yeah, I think so. I uh, I rewatched those movies somewhat recently, and um, I loved them as a kid, and I I, I still kind of fall into kid mode uh, when I watch them. But I do. I think I I agree with what you're saying. Henry Cavill's got that look, and uh, a lot of people that's their Superman because they they weren't interested till, in Superman until Henry Cavill came along, and that's awesome. Um, and a lot of people, for me, for the longest time, my Superman has always been Tom Welling. I grew up on Smallville. And um, this is sort of me. He's uh, that's always been mine. But this kind of feels like an extension of that character, the way he was written in that. So I don't, I don't know. I'm just super excited to see where it goes. Yeah, hopefully it does go good. And like you, I guess for my opinions with for the DC movies and follow with Superman, it's more or less the same because I did enjoy Man of Steel for the concept of what they're going for. Just in some parts, I feel like they could have changed some things in terms of the level of destruction he was reeking in Man of Steel, but that was a plot device for Dawn of Justice as well as for the killing Zod thing. I like, felt like that was out of nowhere, but I guess they wanted to try to something different because, I mean, realistically, there was no prison that could hold Zod. Otherwise, it'd just be endless battle again, again, again until someone's dead. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that. Like I said, I enjoy Man of Steel, just not as a Superman movie, if that makes sense. It's a, it's a great movie. It's a great superhero movie, um, but it, it it it's still it's never really felt like Superman to me, and I guess that's that's my biggest gripe with it. But I like the movie as a movie, and so you know that I guess that's all I really have to say about Man of Steel. I may be doing a, a discussion on my podcast about it in the future, so I don't I don't know. It, it might be coming up here in the next few weeks. So if you want to hear my full thoughts on Man of Steel, you'll have to wait for that one. Gotcha. But you know what the crazy thing is? I feel like for Zack Snyder's direction, I don't know if he had different writers throughout the movies, but I feel like he was going for uh, for a lot of Christian symbolism for for this take on Superman here. Yeah, don't even get me started. That That is absolutely my biggest gripe. Um, the, not even that it's in there, because I'm, uh, and, and I don't stray away from sharing this on my page and talk about a lot and even post videos of me where I, you know, talk about the Bible and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely a, a follower of Jesus. And, and, you know, and like I said, I don't shy away from that. And I never have, that's not even the reason I have issues with the, with the symbolism in man of steel and, and BVS. And now here justice league coming up. Um, it's just so on the nose. One of my, one of my all time favorite scenes from man of steel to laugh at is the scene where Clark Kent is sitting in the church. And he's, he's talking to his priest and he's saying something along the lines of like, should someone really have to sacrifice themselves for all of mankind? And as he's sitting there framed right behind him is a mural of Jesus and a stained glass wall. Like it's yeah. just stuff like that. It's like you, you can him sitting in a church and saying that is enough on its own. Like you don't, you don't have to hammer it into us, but that's a whole other discussion for another day, I think. <laughs> Yeah, probably. It's just some a couple of things that come to mind, like in terms of how old he was when he stayed, that he was like been on Earth for 33 years. And then I guess with Don, just a big sacrifice, whereas before, like everyone was like not really supportive of him. But then after his death, nearly everyone came to his fu funeral like he was like the president or something. And that's the way you described it is enough to get the point across, like the symbolism. But instead, Zack Snyder decided at Superman's death scene, there needed to be three crosses behind him if you watch the death scene in in bvs you can see he literally framed the shot with like three crosses behind him which i think is just like you can you can tell you don't have to uh you don't have to show us that you know i don't know it's a it's a little it's a little much for my taste yeah i i imagine so but that's one glad for with superman lois they don't really hammer that in as much it's just well and i think that's a huge part of superman's character um is that Superman is and is 
in his essence, just a guy, right? Like, yes, he is this alien and he has all these powers and, and all this awesome stuff. But at his core, he was raised on a farm in Kansas. Like he's just a normal dude. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think Zack Snyder ever quite got that. Yeah, I guess so. Cause I mean, I felt, I mean, there were some more subtle references with um, Richard Donner's t- take and maybe that was even the, some of the original career's intentions with that from the beginning. Oh, most. I would imagine so. Yeah. Um, but it is, there's still the, that's, that's the comparison, right? That's the, you got the, you got the human part of Clark, which is who he really is versus how the world sees him. Um, and the DCU kind of always felt like that's how he saw himself too, which has always been kind of part of the reason I don't think it really feels like Superman in those movies. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause it really didn't develop like a, difference of personality between whether he's like wearing the glasses or not no absolutely not but yeah (laughs) i could go on and on all day about about that because i'm not you know like i said i am a big fan of man of steel as a movie i'm not that big a fan of bvs as a movie and um just leaks a whole other discussion i do think this is you're going to get me kicked off the internet for saying this um i do think that Justice League is the best that the theatrical Justice League, by the way, not the center cut, is the best that Superman has been written in the DCEU so far. Um, which, like I said, you're going to get me kicked off the internet for that one. CGI mustache aside, that's the best he has been written the whole time, I think. Like, there's some great Superman moments in that, like where he's lifting the whole building of people and flying away and uh, the, you know, the, the truth justice line that he, you know, gives Seven Wolf. It's all great stuff. And I really like it. And the the little scene <laughs> at the end with Superman and Batman and buying the farm, like all of those things are so great. That opening scene that everybody complains about where the CGI looks the worst, it's a ph- phenomenal Superman scene where he's telling the kids, you know, like hope is like a river. It winds and it, it twists. And I don't know. I love that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had no, initially had no problem with, with the theatrical cut at first. because I don't like the movie. I need to clarify. I don't like theatrical Justice League because the movie is a is a mess. Yeah, it is. Um, but there are moments like that that I just love. The specifically the Superman moments through that movie, they're they're stellar. I think they're really fun. Oh yeah, because I think they timed it well. Where you know, in a sense, Superman is you know reborn, reborn, just as when DC in the comics they were doing their rebirth line. Yeah, uh, which is is fun. I don't. I don't keep up as much with, with comics as I used to. Um, I, I used to be, and this kind of goes back to my art and stuff. I used to be super into comic books and and these characters and all that kind of stuff. But as I kind of got older, I mean, I've been doing this since I was 15, right? Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm 20, 21, almost 22 now. So it's like, I've, I've kind of grown out of that a bit. I still like these characters and I still, still like the, the stuff that's going on, but I'm kind of just, I'm more into the d- design aspect now when it comes to my art. Like I, I'm still designing comic book characters because that's what my page was built off of. And that's what my followers expect, but I'm not as into it as I used to be um, when I was younger. So I don't keep up with comics all that much anymore just because I've kind of, kind of had to drop that. I've got like adult responsibilities now. <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, I know. I, kinda, I feel the same way because I, it's, it's hard to keep track with all these like reboots and stuff. That's why I prefer just like with the media aspect of things, because at least it's just one centered universe, even though there was a kind of reboot with the CW shows. I guess it you could say it's quote unquote one centered universe, but you got Marvel and they're doing the multiverse thing and DC and they're doing the multiverse thing. And the Flash is going to have Michael Keaton's Batman in it. And it's it's all over my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting, especially with their take on Supergirl. Yeah, no, I'm super excited for that. I don't know why Supergirl is in the Flash movie, um, but I'm super excited to see it. I think um, Sasha Call, I believe, is her name. Yep. Um, I'm really excited to see how they take it. I think she looks a lot like Henry Cavill, which makes sense because this is the universe in which Henry Cavill is Superman, um, and she's supposed to be his cousin. So, yeah, I saw. I didn't see as many people complaining as I expected to um, about the hair, right, because she's, she's not blonde. I didn't see many people complaining about that, um, which was neat. Um, yeah, that was surprising, but they probably figured like he, they can just like either dye your hair blonde or 
because with Flash, he travels like between like different realities or time periods. It's probably going to be like an alternate version of Car or something, or maybe even uh, a woman version of Superman, so to speak. Yeah, that could be neat too. I don't think hair color matters. I mean, this is the the world where Barry Allen's hair is black. So you know, even if it is this this world's version of of Supergirl, I think it'll be a okay either way. Um, like I said, she looks a lot like Henry Cavill to me. She's kind of got um, they have similar smiles and stuff. So. I'd be, I'm curious to see it. Once again, I have no idea why Supergirl is appearing in the Flash movie, but I also don't know why Michael Keaton's Batman is appearing in the Flash movie. So uh, I will patiently await this movie. And um, I'm very curious to see how it turns out. It, it, it looks like it's going to be a mess, but they could pull it together last minute. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Especially, and it looks like for Flash, you'll have a new costume, at least based on the promotional art that they released earlier. Yeah, which is neat. Um, I think the the Justice League Flash suit is an absolute marvel of design. Like it is, I put it up there with Pattinson's bat suit, bat suit as like so well designed, where everything works together really well, and um, just on its own, the fact if you take out the flat fact that it's a Flash suit, like it's the way everything works together and all the different pieces and how we've never really seen a superhero suit like it. And, and the cowl where it's got that little back extension piece. Like I love Ezra Miller's flash suit. And I know that's um, not everybody does, but more and more people are coming around to it, but it, it is, it's just so well designed. I think. I agree. Cause it's definitely has a lot of function function to it. Cause it makes sense for him to go very fast. Like he needs like spaceship parts essentially. Yeah. It's super neat. Um, and like I said, that goes with the patents and bat suit where it's just every piece seems to fit together perfectly, um, which is something we don't often see with with comic book superhero armor and stuff like stuff doesn't really always work together well. Um, but both of these suits, I think, are great examples of that happening. Like the Dark Knight suit is an instance. I think the Dark Knight suit is great. A lot of people don't like it, but I think it's great. But th- the pieces don't really seem to work together all that well. Like they're just kind of there for for decoration. But both the the, yeah, the Justice League Flash suit and the um, the Pattinson suit seem like like they every piece looks like it should be there, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see the new suit too. It looks like they're taking it a completely different direction, which I'm also fine with. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah. Speaking of suits. What do you think for uh, on the WandaVision show? Will we see Wanda have an official Scarlet Witch costume? I don't think we will see it on WandaVision. When does this episode come out of your podcast? When do you drop these? Uh, usually I drop them like, like I usually after every other a week, uh, after a week or so after recording. Oh, okay, yeah. So the last episode of WandaVision will probably be out when people are listening. So I'm about to eat my words if I'm wrong, but I don't think we're going to see the suit in WandaVision, but I do think we will see it in Doctor Strange. I think it'll be in in Multiverse of Madness. I think we will see the Scarlet Witch suit there. We may see it in like a little sneak sneak preview, like after credits thing in the last episode of WandaVision, Um, but I don't think we will see her wearing it in the show. That's my official prediction. Hmm. Yeah, because with this show, you never know what's going to happen. Cause, like, no, absolutely not. Because, <laughs> I mean, I saw, like, that silhouette of what looked to, looked to be her in costume when she uh, first peered into the Mind Stone back, at least in the flashbacks, so. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting because they already introduced the the headdress and costume in an earlier episode and said it was something else. It was like a Sokovian fortune teller, which I guess works out to be a witch. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been loving WandaVision so far. You can tell by the red curtain behind me. I guess you probably couldn't tell, but I'm a big Twin Peaks fan. Um, love Twin Peaks. That was the reason for putting up this red curtain for for various things like this. Uh, I like the, you know, reminds me of the Black Lodge, but WandaVision has reminded me so much, especially the early stuff. The later episodes have gotten a little more, Marvely, which I also enjoy, but those early few episodes reminded me so much of like the first two seasons of Twin Peaks, where it was like just normal ish sitcom stuff, and then something really weird would happen, and the whole tone would shift for a few minutes, and then it would just kind of go back to normal. Um, and so yeah, I've been loving WandaVision, especially people talk, people complain about those first two episodes, 
but they're two of my favorite episodes of the whole thing, just because they are so normal, like parody of the old sitcoms, that kind of stuff. And then it's like, bam, <laughs> yeah. something weird happens and the aspect <laughs> ratio changes and, and it gets like HD and it's crispy and like, like, I don't know, really, really like, really, really have been liking WandaVision so far. It's been super fun to watch through and, and theorize about and all that kind of stuff, which I can't be into as much anymore because I don't read comic books. So I don't know. I don't know what is going on, but I've been having a whole lot of fun watching it. Yeah. Cause every time I finish an episode, I, I theorize what's happening. Cause at first I thought like sword was the one doing this as sort of like an experiment, like, um, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's like where Jim Carrey is like in a reality show or something. The Truman Show. It's one of my all-time favorites. Great movie. That was it. Yeah. And I I feel like you have to rewatch every episode so that you can understand what's going on. And by the time you get to the eighth one, you really understand why we're seeing all these different time periods of shows. Because Wanda wanted to have like the classic American lifestyle where she's like married, have kids, you know white picket fence, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I, and that's been super cool to see where, you know, where we, we get to see her watching those sitcoms and then go back and see how they play out throughout the show, which has just been super cool. I have said from the beginning, and once again, by the time you guys are listening to this, I haven't seen the last episode, so I could be eating my words right now, but I have said very, from the very beginning, I genuinely think that they're going to set Wanda up as the villain here. Like, you know, and they've kind of hinted at it and they've gone forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards over whether or not she's actually doing it. Not that she's not a sympathetic villain um, because, you know, you feel for her and her loss of vision and all that kind of stuff. But I've said from the beginning, they're setting her up to just have to be the one who has done it all. And um, in episode seven, they sort of confirmed ish that. um but I don't know. We'll have to see where episode eight goes. But I think they're setting her up because we know she's going to be in Multiverse of Madness. Um, mm-hmm. But I genuinely think this is just me thinking here. I think she's going to be the villain of Multiverse of Madness, not just a character who's in it. I think they're setting her up to be one of the MCU's big bads. Because how cool would that be to have one of your Avengers turn evil and be one of the villains you follow? I don't know. That's always been neat for me. And it seems like they've been setting that up from the beginning for Wanda. And I would be somewhat disappointed if they didn't go through with it, just because I think it's such a neat story. But I guess we'll have to find out next week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, who knows how this is all going to turn out. But I mean, I'm not familiar much with Scarlet Witch as, as far as within the comics and stuff. But she always seemed to be kind of like in the middle of things, like not really with the good guys, but not really for the bad guys either sometimes, unless it's loyalty to her father, Magneto, traditionally. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, with the MCU version, you almost kind of forget all those details, right? <laughs> um, just because the story is so much different. I don't know. I think she's so, we know she's going to be in Doctor Strange 2. If she's not the bad guy, it doesn't make all that much sense for her to be in Doctor Strange 2. That's kind of how I've rationalized it in my head. Um, Some people have theorized that uh, Baron Mordo may pop up in the last episode of WandaVision uh, to sort of like recruit her to fight the wizards, which would be neat. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen or how many of the cameos are going to appear because I was not expecting, uh, let's see, cameo uh, side actors from Thor ant-man and even captain marvel because i almost forgot about um the little girl little girl from captain marvel yeah and she's been one of the better episodes of this whole of this whole thing and 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 uh jimmy woo has been great uh yeah it's been everybody has been so good all those characters and and character actresses just to pop up and 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 be in this show has been so fun i it's 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 a very connecting tissue for for the MCU kind of, kind of deal. I don't know. Um, I, I expected some stuff like that, but, but not all that much. Um, the, the one big one, and I guess we can spoil it cause we've already kind of spoiled some other stuff, but Evan Peters was <laughs> awesome. Just yeah. to see him pop up. I've always liked him better than Aaron Taylor Johnson as Quicksilver, like of the two as they, cause they were coming out at the same time. Like both of those characters were there together. Seeing Evan Peters was awesome. I've always liked him more as Quicksilver. So just seeing him uh, with Wanda on screen was so cool. Whether they keep him or not, 
And still part of me is holding out hope that they're going to keep him as Quicksilver for the MCU. Probably not, but he was always the the best part of those latter, um, those latter X-Men movies. When they got rid of Hugh Jackman, Evan Peters became the best part. <laughs> and so definitely, uh, I really kind of hope they, they transfer him and bring him into the MCU. But even if they don't, it was neat to see him in those few episodes. Yeah. Cause before we got to the whole, like, um, Agatha all along segment. I I honestly thought somehow Wanda was able to like pull in Pietro from that universe with speak. So that way they can establish the multiverse as a lead up to the Doctor Strange sequel. But yeah, and it, it doesn't seem like they've done that. But even with what they did, you know, keep him. Just keep him. He's already got the powers. Just keep him as uh just keep him as Quicksilver. Doesn't matter. Just leave him. <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> Definitely. Either way, I feel like with the Doctor Strange sequel and some of their shows is going to lead to um, some kind of big multiverse mashup kind of similar with the crisis on Infinite Earths and maybe even I um, uh, can't think of the bad guys, but I see them in like other fan and stuff. I think it was a uh, Kano, Kano, I think some kind of like time travel guy. So like, yeah, that's a question for someone else. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, crisis was something similar. I don't know that the MCU is going to take it quite that far. They might, who knows? Um, I think the MCU is going to have, they know where the line is. I don't know where the line is cause I'm not a filmmaker, but they, Kevin Feige is a smart man. He knows where the line is. Like we can take it this far before we start losing people because comic book fans like, like me and you and, and all the other nerds out there, like we know all of these things. And so if you start doing all this weird crisis-esque stuff like we'll, we'll be fine but that's not the majority of the people watching these movies the majority of the people watching these movies are i've never picked up a comic book and are just normal people yeah um, that's- and so they're going to be super confused with all this stuff so kevin feige knows where that line is and he knows to ride that line and and um i trust him i i so we'll, we'll just have to see i don't know how deep into the multiverse dr strange is going to go i guess we'll just have to figure that out as we go along yeah, because I think he, we're going to see him be the central protagonist for the um, this new show called What If, which is and which is for one animated, but also seeing um different possibilities of other characters taking different choices. Like if Peggy took on the sol- sol- Soldier Serum, I think a a zombie esque episode, like somehow a zombie virus infected ev- everyone or something. Because I saw a Captain America zombie fighting against Bucky. Yeah, we'll have Marvel zombies. I think one of the, or probably the one I'm most excited for um, is Black Panther as Star-Lord. That's going to be awesome. Um, like, what if what if they had picked up T'Challa uh, instead of Peter Quill? And, like, I'm super excited for that. And it's actually, I, I'm, I'm if I remember correctly, Chadwick Boseman's last performance. Yep, um, it is. Period is, is for Marvel's What If. So, yeah, I'll be checking that out. It seems super cool. Definitely. But I will say we're out of time for right now. Thank you for being part of this podcast. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. Uh, <laughs> can I plug my podcast real quick? Sure. Okay. Uh, so Simi Pro is the name of the podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search up Simi Pro. Uh, we talk movies, basically. Uh, comic book movies, non-comic book movies. We do some commentary tracks on there and stuff. But I do that with Britt Edit, who's an art buddy of mine. And uh, so, yeah, check that out if you if you want. Sounds good. And for you viewers, stay tuned for more content on my YouTube channel, whether it's Star Wars Confidential Blade or any other music videos or trailers. So stay tuned.